are these people? So other than you, um, can you give our audience a few resource recommendations? So other journalists, books, news networks, podcasts, documentaries, so they can have a better understanding of what's happening in the region. And we can't all be in the um, region. I'd love to. There's plenty of dates I'd like to go try over there. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you're welcome. I mean, actually, for people to understand as well, it's actually very easy, easy sorry, to come to Syria. I mean, there are now really good little tourist agencies that are running, you know, week-long or two-week-long tours. It's not expensive. It's really not expensive. I mean, the flight's probably the busiest part. Yeah, it's probably expense. the most expensive part, yeah. 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 Um, and, and, you know, come and see this history before potentially it is really kind of destroyed. I hope not. I really hope not. But, you know, it, it is the cradle of civilization, and, and, it, and it is an extraordinary country to visit. You, you will not regret it, and you will go away from it um, with such an understanding of what's going on in the world today. That's, that's the thing, because there isn't one person in Syria that doesn't get what's been going on um, for years here. Um, so resources, uh, Kivok al Masyan, who's uh, Armenian Syrian, uh, based in Europe, but um, his show is Syriana Analysis, and he does fantastic analysis on the region. Um, Eva Bartlett, of course, who, um, you know, we've both spent time together in Palestine and here in Syria. She's done incredible work in um, Donbass. She's been to Venezuela and to um, uh, DPRK. Um, Fiorella Isabel, of course, who um, has, you know, I, I, I think one of the best understandings of US politics. Um, Resources, David Miller in the UK um, on the whole Zionist movement. Um, we recently did a really good interview, or I think it was a really good interview with him, where he breaks down how the Zionist movement has infiltrated even organizations like Antifa, um, the uh, so-called anti-fascist movements in the UK, how they coined the phrase Islamist extremists. Um, right. and, and they created Islamophobia, actually. So the Zionist, he explains, I mean, he just blew my mind, and I thought I had a pretty good understanding of it, but I mean, he just took it to another level. So he's a really good source. Um, books, uh, I'm hopeless at actually remembering titles and stuff. You can I send you a list that wars? you can put yes, in there? Yes, you yes, can. You can. Yeah. Um, that would be a lot easier, because I'm, I'm just terrible at remembering everything you already mentioned um, a hundred year war in palestine yeah the hundred years war on palestine um but i've forgotten the name of the author i'm sorry i'm like I'm <laughs> that's okay terrible these days. you're good um, me too uh um, ilan pape of course is pretty solid particularly on the um history um of, of you know how the the awful non-state of Israel, as I call it, was um, created. Yeah. Um, oh, God. Who else have I recently been reading? Oh, there's a ton of stuff. Can I send you all the titles and the Yes, you can. I will happy take those. that. <laughs> you know. so, no, because how... there's one really good book. Um, actually, let me just see. Cause... Um, obviously, I can't get English books in Korean, <laughs> so I had to resort to a kind of Kindle type thing because it's the only way I can um, get to read anything. A Hundred Years' War on Palestine is uh, Rashid Khalid, K-H-A-L-I-D. Um, but the one that is really good, that gives like a really wide history of the whole region leading up to the war against Syria, is the struggle of major powers over Syria. Struggle um, of major powers over Syria is written by, hold on, Jamal Wakim. Under um, British occupation of Palestine and even previously under the Ottoman Empire occupation, but particularly under the British occupation, the Palestinian story was completely silenced. 
you know, all of the kind of um, resistance newspapers that were established to try and talk about the Zionist influx um, were shut down and censored. Um, the uh, editors and so on were arrested and imprisoned. So the Palestinian story wasn't actually allowed um, to, to be seen. While, of course, the, the Zionist story was, as it is now, um, promoted and supported and, and, and um, absolutely amplified by the West and by Western media and, and Western regimes. Um, but the Palestine story was silenced from very early on, even before uh, 1917, which is quite extraordinary. So I think it's really important to read regional voices because um, they're the voices of experience, and even historically, they're, they're, they're going to be telling you things that you're not going to be told in school. Right. right. <laughs> and you're certainly not going to be told by Washington Post or CNN or BBC <laughs> or any of those. You know, so it, it's very important to read their voices, in my opinion. One other person, um, particularly on Yemen, is Professor Issa Blumi, B L U M I. Um, okay. and he's written some of the best books on the history of Yemen, for example, who are, you know, the king of the resistance, in my opinion. Yes. At the moment. Um, <laughs> very fun seeing them take over boats. Um, yeah. Oh, can I just mention Marwa Osman as well? Please follow no, Marwa Osman. you're not allowed. <laughs> <laughs>